estimates. Okay, because it's a bit pointless because I guess you all know the sense algorithm, but anyways, in sense, we perform these squares to obtain an image uh, using um, sensitivity estimates, which we can acquire from a previous scan or, or from the central case space. And the problem we have is that if this estimate is inaccurate, we're going to get aliasing, aliasing artifacts. So one possible solution is applying a joint iterative estimation of both the image and the sensitivity <coughs> functions. Um, this, was, this framework was introduced by Ingrid Cheng in 2007. The idea is we have the same um, least squares problem, but now we optimize both the image and the sensitivity functions. So uh, this is usually, uh, this is done by a greedy scheme in which uh, first we obtain our, um, our sense image and then we fit a um, 2D polynomial which represents the sensitivity functions since they're smooth and they are fitted using the image we have. We can do this alternately until uh, we converge to a better sensitivity estimate and hopefully to a better image estimate. The possible disadvantages is that we have, if we use high order polynomials we're going to have uh, a lot of computational complexity. So compressed sensing, I guess you will know about this also, where um, the basic idea introduced by Candace Eda and Donojo in 2006 is to exploit the sparsity of our image and incoherence between the, our measuring transform and the transform in which the image is sparse. So basically, um, we, we perform L1 minimization uh, with a data constraint and um, in practice we solve for a certain lambda. So okay, in MRI, this was developed by Lucy. 2007, our sparsity transform, as we already have seen, is usually wavelets or spatial finite differences. Our measuring transform um, should be a, some incoherent trajectory in, um, in case space, which can be radial or variable density random. Uh, for parallel imaging, um, our measuring transform incorporates the pointwise multiplication by a sensitivity estimate. So this is the same framework. It could be asked whether this is um, compressed sensing since uh, when we incorporate our sensitivity function, we don't know if the matrix is going to satisfy the restricted isometry property. We can't really have a point spread function to see what, like, like Lustig did in the case of non-parallel imaging. But anyways, I'm going to call it compressed sensing because it's the trendy name to use. So, um, um, in, in practice, it actually suppresses noise amplification and aliasing artifacts very effectively. I'm going to, to show two, um, two examples. This is just um, the wavelet denoising, we've added um, noise to a simulation, and L1 does pretty good, I guess you know about that. Here we're using a perfect sensitivity estimation. Okay, aliasing artifacts for radial, it also suppresses aliasing artifacts pretty effectively. What is the point of, of showing this? The point is that if we get um, a sensitivity, like our simulated data, and we try to reconstruct it with a sensitivity which, in which we rotate, and pass it through um, a low-pass filter to simulate the fact that the sensitivity estimate is not good. We get the following, following aliases and aliasing artifacts for, um, for the different trajectories. So in regular, we get very clear... Here, there's no noise at all. So for regular, we get very clear aliasing. For, uh, for regular, yeah. For radial, it's more incoherent, and for random, it's pseudo-noise. Uh, that was used by him in the previous. So since there are no, no, there's no noise, but the artifacts we get for incoherent trajectories are almost like noise. We might expect that L1 regularization is going to work good in this setting. So that was our motivation, that the artifacts uh, caused by faulty estimates are very similar to noise and incoherent aliasing, where compressed sensing usually performs well. So this could be maybe an alternative to joint estimation methods. What we did was to compare uh, L1 regularized sense and uh, a joint estimation method, actually a joint sense, for different trajectories, different levels of inaccuracy in the sensitivity estimation, in the absence of noise, and for in vivo data. So, okay, our simulated data is, is a phantom, I'm, I'm sorry about that, because we already saw that it's pretty useless, but <laughs> anyways, just to, to get an idea, um, we simulated Cartesian and radial data um, by using simulated sensitivities where we rotated them to, to several extents and then passed them through a low-pass filtering to try to quantify the degree of, of inaccuracy of the sensitivities and try to relate it to, to the reconstruction quality. So um, our undersampling trajectories have all the same um, net factor, which is 3.66. It's regular with ACS lines, radial, variable density random, and variable density random just in the face encoding direction. 
and the two reconstruction methods are basically generalized sense with total variation, so uh, uh, sparse, um, uh, so uh, spatial finite differences L1, and joint sense with the same kind of regularization. So this is our RMS um, error. The straight lines are basically when we just apply L1 regularized sense. So as expected, we see that for regular trajectory, the results are much worse than for um, more incoherent trajectories such as uh, BD random or, or radial. When we do the joint scheme, uh, those are the little triangles. For the regular uh, case, we, we have a, a huge improvement. For the others, we don't have that much improvement in RMS error. So now I'm going to show a few of the images. Uh, if we don't use L1 regularization at all, there's no noise here. We see that in sense we get very, very big artifacts. Joint sense manages to suppress it to some extent. When we apply the L1 regularization, this also improves, but in the end we don't manage to get rid of the aliasing caused by the inaccurate uh, sensitivity, um, by the inaccuracies in the sensitivity estimate. When we use more incoherent uh, trajectories, L1 already performs much better, for example, in one dimensional BD random, and the joint scheme also improves. And for radial, we already get, we get a, a quite good reconstruction just by applying the TV regularization, and joint sense helps a bit, but, but not that much. So, okay, now we're going to see some in vivo data, uh, which was acquired with, uh, with an eight element head coil. Two trajectories, Cartesian and radial. Um, low resolution coil sensitivities were measured with a, in a previous scan. And the volunteer was asked to rotate his head after the, the scan in order to uh, simulate a setting where like, the patient would move and, and provoke uh, inaccuracies in the sensitivity estimate. The net undersampling factor again was 3.66, and the reconstruction methods are the same, generalized sense. Well, not the same because now, since it's a, it's a brain image, we're going to use wavelet as, as our sparsity transform. So, and, and also the same scheme, the, the joint scheme applied to this also with wavelet L1 regularization. So for the results, uh, we see that with a um, regular trajectory, we get a very clear aliasing if, if we don't apply the joint scheme. The joint scheme is very successful in eliminating this, um, uh, this aliasing. And then for radial, with sense, uh, there are, there's much less aliasing artifacts. It seems that it manages to somehow suppress the, some of the artifacts which, which are produced by sensitivity inaccuracies without needing the, the joint scheme. So that the joint scheme is, is, is pretty similar. So the conclusions would be that uh, the compressed sensing framework seems to be quite robust to sensitivity estimate inaccuracies, especially compared when, to when we just do denoising on a regular uh, non-incoherent trajectory. And uh, the joint destination framework seems to be much more effective for regular trajectories than for irregular ones. And um, combining compressed sensing and sense for irregular trajectories could be an efficient uh, alternative to, to joint estimation methods which are generally more conventionally uh, costly. Future work could, com um, could include combining the strengths of, of both approaches and uh, maybe incorporating sensitivity estimation into the compressed sensing framework. Thank you very much.